Hi everyone, my name is Kylie James. I'm a certified nutritionist here at Core Nutrition. I'm here today to talk to you about our gut and how it can have a direct impact on our a direct impact on our mood in terms of making us feel happier, making helping us to reduce anxiety, helping us to sleep better. There is a massive connection between the gut and the brain. So you've often probably sometimes heard of um, the second brain. And when you think about it with our emotions, we, we feel a lot of our emotions in our gut. So when we get happy, we may get like a flutter in our, in our tummies. Or if we get um, nervous or anxious, we feel like that pit in our stomach. There is massive communication going between our gut and brain all the time by our nervous system, by our hormones, by our immune system. And one of those things that influences our brain from our gut is our microbiome, which is that good bacteria in our gut. This can actually have a significant impact on our brain chemistry and the way we think and the way we feel and the way we behave. So it can have a really um, impact on with regards to stress, anxiety, mood, and even making neurotransmitters. But what I particularly want to talk to you today is about the microbiome, that bacteria in the gut. We have trillions of bacteria in our gut. In fact, we have more bacteria in our gut than we do actually human cells. And we have a thousand different species, over a thousand. Um, so the composition of that microbiome varies from person to person. And this is based on a number of factors. So age, diet is huge, behavior, environment, and genetics. And what research is showing there is a direct correlation between our microbiome and the gut and the health of our gut um, with respects to lower rates of depression. So this is the thing that often gets overlooked when regards to um, health professionals dealing with, with um, people that have depression is the gut and the gut microbiome actually have a huge influence. So we've heard of that neurotransmitter serotonin. Serotonin is really important because that's our happy hormone. It makes us feel happy. It actually helps with our stress response. It determines our appetite um, and also even our sexual, tri sexual drive. But 90% of our body's serotonin is actually made in our gut and it's made by our gut microbiome. The other good thing about our good bacteria in our gut is that it actually has a marked impact on our GABA levels. So GABA is another sort of hormone neurotransmitter that's in our brain that helps really help with anxiety. It helps like make us feel relaxed, help us sleep, but also helps with mood and di digestion. So our gut microbi microbiome can have a direct impact on our anxiety and our mood. So the other thing is gut inflammation. So the common bacteria that we hear of is Lactobacillus acidophilus and Bifidobacterium. So these are our friendly bacteria. But what the research has shown that these can actually lower levels of toxic compounds in our brain um, and can lower inflammation in the brain by reducing certain cytokine levels. So cytokines are those that sort of inflammatory inflammatory markers in the blood and sometimes when you get blood work done um, they'll uh, assess different cytokine levels or those inflammatory markers but what research has shown is these specific cytokines have an impact on anxiety depressive symptoms and even impact on our cognitive functioning as well like our memory and our concentration so super important that that good bacteria helps reduce inflammation. And I talked in my previous presentation about how inflammation is a real, um, a real contributing factor to depression. So with our foods that we eat, like the sugars, the refined crap, refined grains, the white breads and stuff, they actually feed the bad bacteria in the gut. So it really helps to um, help those bad bacteria proliferate. So what's really interesting about these gut microbiome is they can actually have a direct impact on our medications that we take. So, you know, when doctors are trying out certain antidepressant medications or any medications, you may find that, you know, it reacts positively with some people and not really um, that effective with other people. And that actually can be a result of the gut microbiome. The gut microbiome has also been shown to determine whether someone has a side effect from a medication as well, which is super interesting. So you might find some people might either put on weight or experience headaches or constipation from or a certain medication but a mother person may not have any of those side effects and that could be because of the person's gut 
microbiome. So super interesting. So what I wanted to talk to you today is about what we can do to help really boost that good bacteria in our gut. So first and foremost, we want to get rid of the sugars and the refined grains because that's going to feed the bad bacteria. And we want to be incorporating green tea, ginger, and those omega-3 rich foods such as your oily fish, your flaxseed, flax oil, your olives, olive oil, they're all going to help increase the protection of their lactobacillus acidophilus and that bifidum bacterium. These are all going to help to lower that inflammation and toxins in the brain that contribute to depression. And here it is again, no surprise, eating your fruits and vegetables. So that dietary fiber find in fruits and vegetables helps to feed that good bacteria in our gut. And studies shows that the diversity, because we talked about these thousands of different species, that diversity of microbiome was directly related to the diversity and the variety of the fruits and vegetables that we ate. So definitely getting a repertoire of eating the rainbow um, was really going to help to feed the variety of microbiome in our gut. But what it also found is that the microbial composition of the gut actually rapidly changed when we changed our diet. So this is something that can change quite quickly um, by just eating more fruits and vegetables. So the research shows that consuming just four extra portions of fruit and vegetables a day could actually help boost a person's mental health. And the more people ate fruits and vegetables, the less likely they were diagnosed with a mental health illness. So how much do we need to eat? Well, Health Canada recommends seven servings of fruits and vegetables for women aged 14 to 50 and eight servings of vegetables for males aged 14 to 50. But World Health Organization recommends between seven to 13. So if you're someone that has trauma, maybe you do have some mental health illnesses, um, maybe some other health complication or health issues, then really you should be pushing up near that like 10 to 13 range. For kids, they should be consuming five servings of fruits and vegetables a day. And definitely you want to be eating that rainbow, eating the variety to make sure that you're really um, getting that diversity of microbiome in the gut. Okay, we also want to consume fermented foods. So fermented foods are things like your kimchi, your yogurt, your kefir, your kombucha, and your sauerkraut. Sauerkraut has trillions of bacteria. It's just like popping a, a probiotic. And you could just put that on a side with your chicken, put it on top of your salad. Um, definitely getting the the fat, um, sorry, the don't stay away from the fruit flavored yogurts because they're usually contain a lot of sugar in it. So doing kefir actually has more of those good bacteria than regular yogurt, but yogurt still has some. Um, so you want to be getting those in and then just add those fruits in so to get those help feed that good bacteria. So what happens is that fermentation process allows that live bacteria to flourish and grow and develop. And like I said, these live microbiomes, these live microorganisms um, actually help with the growth of healthy bacteria in your gut, help to increase serotonin levels to help you feel happy and help with GABA, increasing GABA levels to help you feel relaxed and just get a better sleep at night, which is really important because a lot of people with depression have a difficult time sleeping as well. So you also want to consume prebiotics. So unlike probiotics, prebi prebiotics are not live organisms. What they are is they contribute to the health of the microbiome, but because they contain these indigestible fibers that actually ferment in the gastrointestinal tract. And what this does, this is food or fuel for that good bacteria. So it feeds that good bacteria to help it flourish and help it proliferate. So the more good bacteria that there is in your gut, the better off you are at fighting off that bad bacteria that might be trying to sort of get established in there. So prebiotic foods include things like your artichokes, your leeks, your onions, garlic, chicory, cabbage, asparagus, legumes, and oats. And of course, looking at taking a prebiotic. I'm uh, sorry, a probiotic. So there's a variety of probiotics out there. So definitely want to go to a health food store and um, and ask the um, 
the uh, person there what would be a good probiotic for you. We definitely recommend at least 10 billion active cultures. And you also want to look at multiple strains, but definitely including that lactobacillus acidophilus and that bifidum bacterium to help lower that inflammation in the brain. Um, you want to also check too, most probiotics need to be stored in the fridge. Um, if you do keep it on the shelf, it'll start to create degrade and you won't get as many of those active cultures um, in there. And sometimes I like to mix up the brands as well, just so I can get a variety of different um, organisms as well. But I tend to put everyone on a probiotic. Um, it's, it's super important. So that's the end of my presentation today. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. So definitely, you know, supporting your gut is, goes a long way to supporting a healthy mood. So take care out there, everyone. Stay safe and I'll see you soon.